Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. Here's another integral of the day. And yes, it is an improper integral. We have integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x sine x dx. Now, I'm looking at the integrand and noticing that I've got a product of an exponential and trig function. And this should trigger in your brain. Oop, I'm going to need to do integration by parts. And this is one of those ones where... You have to repeat the process of integration by parts twice because the integral boomerangs, as I like to refer to it. So it can get a little messy dealing with that when you have these limits of integration here. And then if you already replace this with T like we should and write lim and all that stuff. So I always encourage my students in this case, just to be a little bit safer, let's just do the integration on an indefinite integral so we don't have to worry about it and then we can put everything together at the end okay so we have integral indefinite we're just writing this out so we can perform the um, integration process more easily e to the negative x sine x dx so now we have to pick u and dv and it doesn't matter which part of the uh, product is u and which is dv as long as you're consistent in both rounds. So I'll tell you what I mean in a second. So say we let u be e to the negative x and then dv is sine x dx. Again, I could have chosen it the other way around. It's all good. Then du is going to be negative e to the negative x dx and v is going to be, think backwards, antiderivative of sine x. It's negative cosine x. All right, so this is our integral. We can call it i, if you will. So i is equal to, remember we have u times v, that's negative e to the negative x cosine x minus integral of the product v du. So then notice here we have two negatives. Did you catch that? They're gonna cancel out. So this is still going to be minus e to the negative x cosine of x dx. Okay, fabulous. Now this is where we repeat once again the process of integration by parts to this integral here. And then my original integral i will boomerang or come back to me. All right. This is where it does matter how you choose uh, u and dv, and we're gonna call them something else because this is round two, so let's do u bar and dv bar. So just look back, okay, I originally let u be the exponential portion of the function, so u bar needs to also be the exponential portion of the function. If you uh, go the other way around, you just end up undoing what you did. I'm, telling, I'm warning you from experience. Okay, then du bar, again, negative e to the negative x dx, and then v bar, antiderivative of cosine x is just going to be sine x. Okay? Beautiful. All right, so let's put everything together now. So the original integral is equal to negative e to the negative x cosine of x minus, let's put some brackets, keep things organized. So u bar v bar, e to the negative x sine of x minus integral, and then this time I have du bar v bar. And this negative here is going to cancel with the negative in front of the integral, making it a positive e to the negative x sine of x dx. And our boomerang should be back to us now. Do you see it? Well, look, our original integral was antiderivative e to the negative x sine x dx. Here it is. So you can just replace that entire integral with i. Okay, and then let me rewrite where we're at. If this is the first time you've done it, I'm really writing a lot of steps. When you get comfortable, you don't have to write so much. Let's distribute the negative, minus e to the negative x, sine of x. Now I have minus i, right? Did you catch that? Minus i. And then we're trying to evaluate this antiderivative. Essentially, we're solving for i. So add i. That way we can move it over to the left with its buddy. So 2i equals negative e to the negative x cosine x minus e to the negative x sine x. And then divide by 2. And at the same time, I, I would love to just factor out a negative e to the negative x. Doesn't that sound nice? 
So negative 1 half e to the negative x, and then we have cosine x plus sine x, and then this is the funky part. You do need to remember to add plus c on your own. It doesn't organically happen when you um, use this integration process, but here we are. Okay, good. So now we have the antiderivative. How am I going to use that? Like so. So back to the problem that we had. Back to our problem. So we have the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x sine x dx, right? So first things first, replace that upper limit or the upper limit of infinity with a dummy variable. And we're going to rewrite this as the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x sine x dx. And then I don't have to go through the integration process. I have it all right here. So I'm just going to say, oh, now this is the limit t goes to infinity of negative 1 half e to the negative x times cosine x plus sine of x evaluated from 1 to t. You see? And it, it's just making the whole process a little bit easier along the way. Okay, now let's evaluate at the limits of integration. So this is limit t goes to infinity. Let's leave the negative one half out of things for a minute. And then this is e to the negative t times cosine of t plus sine of t minus e to the negative first times cosine of one plus sine of one. All right, let's see what's going on. As t approaches infinity, do you know where e to the t is going? It's the same as 1 over e to the t, right? So as t is approaching infinity, e to the t is approaching infinity, this whole term is approaching 0. And then cosine of t, as t approaches infinity, remember cosine's graph, it oscillates. So does sine's graph. So this limit right here doesn't exist. What do you do when you have 0 times something that doesn't exist? It doesn't mean the limit doesn't exist. In this particular case, we're going to bust out the squeeze theorem because we can prove that since this quantity right here is bounded, right? Sine and cosine oscillate, but they're bounded above and below. So we can still compute this limit. Let's do it off to the side, okay? So you can just write a little, like, consider. We need to evaluate the limit as t goes to infinity of e to the negative t times cosine of t plus sine of t. Now, hopefully you remember from calculus one, if you show that the limit of the absolute value of a function is equal to zero, then the original limit of that function is equal to zero, okay? So I'm gonna utilize that here. I know the absolute value of cosine of t plus sine t is for sure greater than or equal to zero and also less than or equal to two. Ugh, what an ugly two, hold on, there. Why? Well, the most cosine's ever gonna be is one. The most sine of t is ever gonna be is one. So the absolute value is for sure less than or equal to two. I could probably even use a smaller number because cosine and sine are not simultaneously one at the same t value. But you know what, for our purposes, this is good enough. Now I'm trying to make this quantity in the middle match what I'm finding the limit of in my problem. So I need to multiply by e to the negative t, which is the same as dividing by e to the t, right? And I think it's a little bit nicer on the brain. So divide everybody by e to the t. And then we have zero still is less than or equal to absolute value cosine of t plus sine t over e to the t, which is never zero, never negative. So my inequality is preserved. And then now we can apply the squeeze theorem. So the limit as t approaches infinity of zero, well, that's the constant, that's just zero. Then the limit as t approaches infinity of two over e to the t, well, we said already this denominator is approaching infinity. If I have a constant over infinity, that goes to zero, which means then that this middle function is squeezed or forced to go to the same limit, notice same limit for the upper and lower bounding functions. So the limit as t approaches infinity 
of the absolute value of cosine t plus sine t over e to the t, that limit must be zero also. By the squeeze theorem, cite your sources, don't be a plagiarizer. And then that tells me we have another theorem with no name, but the limit as t approaches infinity, if I don't include the absolute value and I just have cosine t plus sine t, I can rewrite it as e to the negative t now equals zero also. Okay, so that's done. So then we can come back here and use the results of our hard work to finish the problem, to finish the limit paste. Okay, so as we showed up above, this whole term goes to zero from above. And then the rest are just constants. I mean, e to the negative first, fine. Cosine of one and sine of one, I, you know, they're just numbers, so whatever. And all of that gets multiplied by negative one half. So our final limit, our final answer is going to be positive one over two e, because I have e to the negative first, times cosine of one plus sine of one. And I don't care what this limit is, right? In order to answer the question, all I'm interested in is the fact that this is finite, and therefore the integral is convergent. And that concludes the problem. Wow, it really called for a lot of recollection of your limit laws and techniques from Calc 1, which is fabulous, as well as good integration techniques. I don't know how particular your teacher is, so I did the full squeeze theorem for you to all enjoy. I told my students, though, if they encounter this sort of problem, you can just say, you know, this quantity right here is bounded. This goes to zero. Therefore, you can say the product goes to zero. That's kind of like the sloppy way of not taking the time to do the squeeze theorem. So just check with your instructor how thorough they want you to be when you're doing problems like this in, in proper integrals and evaluating limits. All right, I hope you enjoyed the integral of the day. Give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below if you did. And I also have full length video lectures if you need to review the squeeze theorem, limit laws, anything like that, integration techniques. So check out the rest of my playlist on my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok. I even have a Patreon, Math TV with Professor V. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'm going to record more in the next coming days since I have a little bit of downtime. I'm off to ballet, though. Ta-ta.